Cowboy Carter is here and we're breaking down all the features. Plus new music from J-Hope, MGK, Trippy Red, and more. Some 41 stops by to talk about their final album, we find out whose fandom is the strongest, and learn more about Chicano Batman. Howdy partners, it's Friday, March 29th, and welcome to Billboard News. My name is Tetris and I heard there's some kind of renaissance going on. Let's kick things off today with your Friday music guide. I used to say I spoke to country, then the rejection came, said I wasn't country enough, said I wouldn't settle up. Beyonce kicks off her new era busting out the gate with American Requiem, and the highly anticipated Jolene is as good as we expected. Jolene, I'm still a Creole banjo bitch from Louisiana. And it's Dolly P approved. You know that hosey with the good hair you sang about? Reminded me of someone I knew back when. More music coming throughout the show, but for now, here's your top story. Miley Cyrus. I'll be a shotgun right up till the day I die. Post Malone. Never when you tease me in them jeans, girl, you don't need to sign them. And Taylor Swift. We're covering all the features on Beyonce's Cowboy Carter so you don't have to. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. A cover of the Beatles that captures meaning in a way only Beyonce can deliver. Blackbird, which Paul McCartney has said was inspired by racial tension, features up and coming black country singers Tanner Adele, Britney Spencer, Tiara Kennedy, and Raina Roberts. She also grabbed Willie Jones's soulful voice on Just for Fun. I'm going down south just for fun. I am the man I know. And Shabuzi brings the vibes on spaghetti. Someone here brought fire. Yeah. Ain't no telling who. Genre bending musician Post Malone sounds sweet and smooth on Levi's jeans. You know I'd like to be Levi's jeans. But what a reunion it was when Miley and Beyonce's vocals soared and blended to perfection on Two Most Wanted. I'm driving you crazy anytime you like, oh, oh. But whose voice provides the backgrounds on standout track Bodyguard? Fans were convinced it's Taylor Swift. Billboard can confirm Taylor Swift is not credited on the song. Welp, Swifty Hive can still dream. And with so many other flawless tracks on Cowboy Carter, we have plenty to feast on. Our hope, J-Hope, may be serving in the military, but he's also serving Bob's with Hope on the Street, Volume 1. <laughs> And the lead single, Neuron, even comes with an official motion picture. Music fans are just the best, but who is the best? Well, I got to hit the streets to talk to you guys and find out. What fan base do you think goes the hardest for their artists? G-Hype, oh. Swifties, Barbs, bitch, what are they talking about? <laughs> what do you think it is about the Swifties that go so hard? Oh, I don't know. Nikki, look how they changing up on you. We gonna have to have some talk. From the barbs to the army, the Swifties to the beehive, Billboard is hitting the streets to find out which fan group goes the hardest. Who do you think goes the hardest for their favorite artists? It gotta be Beyonce. There's nothing bigger than Beyonce on earth. Beyonce's the queen of the world. Who won the world? Girls, girls. Who won the world? Girls. Sexy Red! Sexy Red! Give me Sexy Red! What, what's Sexy Red's fans called? For the hoes! Cause she looking for the hoes! I'm looking for the hoes. Tell me what fan base you think out there go the hardest for their artists. Mm, Taylor Swift. I gotta say the, the Swifties. Yeah, the Swifties for sure. They be going crazy. Love you, Taylor. Hi. Like, ah! Oh my God. The Swifties are like, you know, up there right now. Gotta go with Travis Scott. Dude, Travis Scott, all day. Utopia, really? How long was that number one? That's still on the chart. You know, you know that. What, who we with? Billboard Hot 100, you yeah. heard? She way too formal, y'all know I don't follow suit. The following behind Travis Scott is unreal. It's actually unmatched. You could actually probably compare it to like a O2 Ja Rule. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know if Travis Scott would think that's a compliment, but I love Ja Rule, so hey. hey. The barbs. The barbs, for sure. All the barbs, bro. I ain't gonna cap. I be seeing them online, bro. Especially on Twitter. They go hard. <laughs> Have they got you on Twitter? I felt like that came from a personal space. Oh, uh, no, no, no. They didn't get me. They didn't get me. Definitely was acting all funny talking about the bomb. We do what Nikki says, and that's it. Future. Why do you think his fans go the hardest? That boy is passionate, bro. Everything he got to say, we all feel. You feel me? YG. Are you here for what? I'm here for YG. I love the way he represents where he come from, and I love how he mixes music up, includes the Latinos. Hey, mama. 
you see the hey. Hey, come on, man. Like, look at that. Box my guy, but I also understand that this is a youth sport. You know what I mean? Because the youth is the future. You know what? Thank you for dropping all that knowledge to me. I belong to way too many of those fandoms to weigh in on that. Who is your favorite artist? Make sure you let us know in the comments. I'm Tetris Kelly, and this is Billboard News. Over here at Billboard, we love a joint sleigh, and this week's collab project we can't get enough of is MGK and Trippy Red's genre sad boy. But why would I even want to be alive to share with someone at Art Basel? So I guess I lost my life again. Some 41 are icons, and they're still killing it in music. Lindsay Havens got to chat with them. Check it out. Right when we went into lockdown, I started getting calls from labels and other managers and artists asking if I would write some songs for them. And everyone was kind of asking for like something leaning pop punk. And we haven't really done any pop punk in a long time. So I thought, I don't even know if I can write anything <laughs> like that. Um, it's been like 16 years. So I thought, maybe I'll just try to write some songs. And I wrote about seven or eight. And once I listened to them, I realized that I actually liked them. Yeah. I didn't want to give them away. I didn't know what I would do with them. I didn't even think they would be some 41 songs. Just hmm. thought, I like these songs, I want to give them away. There were some other songs left over from the previous record that weren't finished, that were more heavy. I started working on some of those. And then throughout the pandemic, I just kept writing and collecting music. And I thought, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to send music out and say, here's what I've been working on, what do you guys think? And one by one, like everybody came back and said, what do you think about a double album? So that's when we kind of realized, okay, the music's saying the same thing to all of us. Do you feel like um, at this point, you know, the process of working on this album, and obviously now I'm sure you're rehearsing, does it feel like a happy distraction from the inevitable final show? I think, it, like I said before, it does feel like it's the beginning and not the end at all. And mm -hmm. I think it's gonna get stranger and stranger as we get closer to the last show. The full interview is on Billboard's YouTube. I've been an Enrique Iglesias fan since day one, and the Latin King is going out with a bang. Here's final volume two. And he's recruited a few names to help him say goodbye, like El Alpha on La Botella. Hey, this is Chicano Batman, and these are five things you might not know about our song, Fly. about Fly that you don't know is that it was actually meant to be really slow, a lot slower than it is. In the studio, we ended up making it a lot faster. Our producer and also Eduardo were like, oh, we should speed it up. And that's what it is now. But I just was just talking to them about maybe putting out a version that's slower because it's actually really dope. Uh, number two, the dove in the music video is not CGI. This guy is a bird whisperer. His birds in his family, it runs through his Salvadorian blood, and he has, he has a calling with animals. Another thing that you might not know about Fly, the music video, is it was directed by these Argentinian sisters called the Giraffe Sisters, and they approached us with this amazing mood board that just had basically like Prince's second album cover and was like, let's make this album cover look into like a music video. And it was just paying homage to artists like Funkadelic, Prince, Rick James. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with it. You know, it was very tongue in cheek and silly. And it was a lot of fun to be on set for. And then when we were in the studio actually making, after we tracked everything and it sounded, you know, banging and it was just huge coming from the speakers after we recorded it, I heard big background vocals, kind of like very kind of just, you know, funkadelic 80s, you know, uh, funk. And that's when I heard those big backup vocals. And uh, shout out to uh, Maya who sang on it and her crew, they killed it. The bass has a reverb. Check any other Chicano Batman song. No other song has reverb on the bass, but fly. Cause why not? It's no rules. And it's time for the weekend. Come back next week for your music news as always, but for now, one more entry from your Friday Music Guide. It's a week for legends as Cheryl Crow gifts us with Evolution. It's her 12th studio album and she's as good as the day we met her. Sing it. 